Okay, let's write the simplest robot program on Earth so that we can start exploring how programming in the physical world is a little bit different than programming just on a computer. And it is so worth practicing some of these fundamentals because they show up everywhere regardless of your programming environment. Start with a grid that can hold some material and secure it lightly to the table. I tried tape but then decided at the end that magnets would be even cooler. Next, load in a piece of 3 8 round stock into one of these corners, and then in world coordinates, handle jog your robot with the four-fingered gripper over top of your stock. Do this part very slowly, because it is easy to crash into your material as you're getting set up. Where you're trying to get is to a position such that you can descend on Z around the cylinder of your stock with the four fingers of the gripper about halfway down. And at this point you don't have to be perfectly centered, you just have to be around. Then close the gripper and grab onto the stock and try to notice if your grid moved or if you got a clean grab. And once you've grabbed it, don't let go. Look around at all angles because holding onto this cylinder it's easy to tell if we're centered in the cylindrical pocket. Look over here, it's crystal so clear that we are biased to the left from this point of view. So, with the slowest your arm will go, reposition that cylinder within the pocket so that it's dead center. I like to do this a couple times just to be sure that I'm really in the center because I'm imagining not that I want to place this material once in a robotic operation, but that I want to place it thousands of times and each time there's going to be more error. So the more centered I can be at the start, the more room I have for error. And then proceed just like we did before to make a user frame. The only difference is that this time you're using this cylindrical piece of stock as your pointer instead of the tip of a magic marker. And as you set each of the three points, origin, x direction, and y direction, you just want to bring the bottom of that stock to the same approximate z height, just like we brought the tip of the magic marker down onto the paper. And when you've got all three points recorded for your user frame, just confirm that you can move along the new x and y axis of this grid with ease. Nice, get your material back to the origin and release it by opening up the gripper. Then jog your robot up and away far above the grid. We're going to call this our home position. Then look down at the teach pendant and find this select button. This brings up your list of programs on the robot. We're going to make a brand new one, so click create and then choose option slash keyboard to give it a name. Start it with I and then underscore for intro class. This will glom all of our programs together so that they're easier to find. And for the rest of the name, give it your username. I'm Daniel Houghton, so my username is D Houghton. And then push this exit button to get that text to type in for the program name. Then push the enter button, and you'll be looking at your blank brand new program. You can see the name here. It's only one line long, and you're looking at the end of the program because it's blank. It begins and ends on the same line. And the robot arm is parked way up here in the home position, so we are ready to record the first line of our program. So hit this add point button, and of the four different types of points that we can record, record this one here, JP 100% CNT 100. What does all that mean? Let's go through it so that it starts to feel less cryptic. One colon here is just the line number. This is the first line in our program. J means joint move. This is not just a recording of a point in space. It has the potential to move the robot when we run this program. If the arm is somewhere else, line one in this program is going to command the arm to move to this point. And how is it going to move? As a joint move. What's a joint move? It just means that the robot is going to rotate its joints however it has to to get to this position. Even if it has to flip around upside down to get there. There's only three kinds of moves, a joint move, a linear move, and a circular arc move and each makes a different promise. For now, just use joint moves when you've got more room for the arm to wiggle around as it situates itself, and use linear moves when you need to move in a straight line from point A to point B. This little at symbol means that the robot is physically at the location represented by this point. If you jogged the robot away from the point, you would see the at symbol go away. P means point, and it really means the array of all the points that you might have stored, and then in square brackets, this one 
1 means point 1, the very first point that we've stored. 100% means get to this point as fast as you can, limited by this speed and by the fact that we're in teach mode. CNT 100 means get to the point as fast as you can with as little deceleration as possible. This doesn't matter much to us at the start as we're not working at production speeds. That should make this whole line more readable so that as we make lots of lines, the act of looking at your program doesn't remain too daunting. Okay, now jog the arm over and down onto your part so that you could successfully grab it, but don't grab it yet. And then jog the robot directly up on Z. This is position two. So get your cursor over this end line and then press add point and add another joint move and notice how now you get point two. Point one is our home position somewhere above our part. Point two is directly above our part. And if you're noticing that there are two at symbols here, you can ignore that for now. You should only be seeing one at symbol at most at a time. Now bring the arm down slowly just on Z until the gripper fingers are near the part, but still above it, not yet around it. Now we're gonna add our third point, but this one isn't gonna be a joint move. It's gonna be a linear move. This one here at the bottom, it's gonna move in that same continuous 100% manner right up to the point, but it's gonna move with the promise that it travels along a straight line. And you might also notice that the linear moves start to operate in terms of millimeters per second rather than percentages. We're trying to start locking down our motion with linear moves. We're getting closer to things we might bump into, and so we want the motion through physical space to be more absolute. Okay, now we got three points. One, two, and three. A joint move, a joint move, and a linear move. Bring your robot the rest of the way down now around the cylinder of your part, and then add your next point. This one's going to be a linear fine. The fine here means that the robot is going to de Accelerate very carefully so as to arrive at this point exactly. As you're about to grab something, you want to be as exact as you can. Next, I want to edit this line. Use your arrow keys to go up and over to the 100 millimeters per second line and type 50 and press enter. This will slow the robot down as we get very close to our part. Next, we want to close the grippers, so press this right arrow key to get to your other menu. We're not going to add a point, we're going to add an instruction. And right here on page one, we're going to add an input output instruction, specifically an RO, R for robot, O for output. Robot output one is the pneumatic air that goes to the gripper. And if we set robot output one to on, then air will be triggered such that the gripper will be closed. Now you can go ahead and close the gripper in real life and jog the robot directly up on Z to lift your part out of the pocket. Press this right arrow again to come back to your first menu. And now we're ready to add another point, a linear fine movement point at 50 millimeters per second. Okay, now bring the robot up, still just on Z, to get even further away and add another point, this one a linear at continuous 100 movement. And notice how these two lines mirror each other. We get close, we drop on Z, we move very slowly, we grab the part, we move up on Z very slowly, and then we move up still on Z, but start to add speed, and then we're gonna start moving on X and Y. Now get yourself a little catch bucket. This is gonna be our target for dropping off the material. Then jog over top of it and add another point. Then jog lower so that you're not so high that the material bounces out and add an eighth point. Then set robot out one to off to open up the gripper and release the material. And the last thing we're gonna wanna do is jog the robot up to a safe height and add one final point. And if you make any mistakes with your typing along the way, check out this edit command menu. Here are all your basic line insertion, deletion, copy, paste maneuvers. They're a tiny bit funky, but they're very learnable. Okay, get your material loaded back into the pocket in your grid. Go ahead and clear the fault so that you're ready to run your program. Press shift up arrow so that you scoot on up to the start of your program. Press this step button so that you go into step mode, which just means run my program one line at a time and then pause and then press shift forward to run it. When you do, you should see the arm move from wherever you left it to your home position, up in the air, somewhere above your grid. And then the arm should stop moving because you're in step mode and it's waiting for you to press shift forward to take the next step. Step by step, walk through your program to see if it works. If anything, 
makes you uncertain. Just let go of the dead man switch so that everything stops. Congratulations, it's a bit of work to get to here. Hopefully this lays the groundwork and shows you how these foundations let you start thinking about grabbing eight things in a row or 64 things in a two-dimensional grid and on and on into the awesome world of mechatronics. If those topics are interesting to you, please let me know so that we can make that path more clear.